Hello friends. I want to thank you so much for your support of the, the new book being Elizabeth Elliot. And I thought you should meet my, my writing partner for the course of that book. Now this is Cody Vaughn, who doesn't look particularly excited about his, his moment right now. But um, the fact is, as you all probably know, that writing is a lonely enterprise. You can be grinding it out and feel like, oh my goodness, does this make any sense? I'm the worst writer ever. I should just go work at Starbucks. And it really makes sense to have a companion by your side who snoozes on the floor, that would be Cody's job, and loves everything you write. And the funny thing is, is Elizabeth Elliot had a lot of those same um, feelings about her own writing life. She was a beautiful writer and has so, so many books, of course, that we're all familiar with, but she agonized over each one. And she too had dogs who would lie quietly on the floor and support her writing life. So I thought you should meet Cody Vaughn. And I wanted to mention a few things about the writing of this book being Elizabeth Elliot. I found it uncanny. I think the way that God works with each of us is he gives us opportunities that are not just one thing, but him working his will and his way in a lot of different things at the same time. And for me, with every book I've written, I think there are 25 now, there is a sense that I am learning so much in my relationship with Jesus in the course of trying to, to write about another human being's interactions with Christ. And so for the writing of Elizabeth Elliot, both volume one and volume two, which is the one that is just released now, her family was so generous with me in giving all of her, her journals, her private papers, her intimate correspondence that is not publicly available. And I had piles and piles of treasure trove to walk through, if you will, the life of this extraordinary woman. And to see her private side, Elizabeth was, was very, re, tended to be very reserved in public, a bit formidable, uh, kind of severe, kind of cold. Many, many people I interviewed talked about feeling those vibes from her. And in her journals, you see the real person, you see the tender person, the woman who was very insecure, the woman who, who often agonized about how she interacted with people and she didn't mean to sound so short, and, but that it sort of came out <laughs> inadvertently. And so for all of us, you know, our journals are a record of the days that God gives us, the good, the bad, and, and the ugly. And in Elizabeth's journey, I found so much that I could relate to, and I hope you will as well in this volume too. I think it is perhaps the most interesting season of her life. I think it is the least known section of her life. And I, for one, I mean, I've known about Elizabeth Elliot since I was a teenager, but I knew hardly anything about her second husband, Addison Leach, and that he, in fact, was the love of her life. And in volume two, uh, in the writing of it, I was quite surprised, and I hope you'll enjoy the reading of it. But uh, that love story, as it unfolded, was an absolute shock to Elizabeth that in middle age, she would fall desperately, passionately, wildly, delightfully in love with a strong man who loved Christ, who was her intellectual equal, her uh, just a, a real soulmate for her. And they had uh, certainly a great love story, not without its own degree of some scandal and also um, certainly pain then, as he was taken down, not even five years into their marriage, with a terrible metastasizing cancer that shrunk him, tortured him, and in fact then took his life. And to see Elizabeth in the aftermath of that horrible, long, drawn-out loss, we all remember that Jim Elliott's loss was awful, but it was quick 
And she, Elizabeth, walked day by difficult day with her husband, Addison, through the Valley of the Shadow. And I have to tell you that personally for me, it was uncanny to see what God had planned for me. I did, never knew it. As I was writing this section of this book about Addison Leach's death and Elizabeth's journey, I, I, when you're writing material like that, you take on the life of the person you're writing about. I was deep in her journals, experiencing as much as I could her experiences so empathetic, so poignant, so awful. And literally within just a few days of finishing my draft of, of that material, having been through what was a, a difficult writing process, my own husband was very suddenly diagnosed with a terrible, large, malevolent, malignant, fast-growing brain tumor. And within just a few weeks of that diagnosis, he died. Now, Lee is in heaven. Our faith is strong. The same God and the same realities of our faith who held up Elizabeth in her terrible loss of her second husband held me in the terrible loss of my husband as I was writing her biography. I found a sense then in this book that uh, the brevity of life, the sweetness of the, our days, the sense that, that God has planned out each day for us. And if we knew what was coming sometimes, we would uh, run in terror. But the Lord is with us. And I saw in Elizabeth's story, and I understood when I returned to the writing of this book in many, several months after, after Lee's death, when I came back to the writing of it, I had a new kind of sharpness and intensity of purpose in telling her story. And in the writing of this book, you'll see more of that as I tried to deal with both truth and love in the parts of her life that I found rather difficult. So I want to thank you again for your kindness and interest in the book. And just, I would ask that in, in the reading of it, I hope that God will meet you where you are and give you a fresh sense of his love, his presence, and his grace for you at such a time as this. Blessings.